Welcome. It's the 21st of June, 2024. This is Jenkins Documentation Office Hours Asia. Topics today, skip the next two meetings as a proposal, release items, including LTS, etc. contributor spotlight, Google Summer of Code, cool things to highlight there. Uh, Jenkins.io recent changes, not much there and not much on version docs. So I suspect we won't get there. And then two items on the spring security upgrade that if we get to them, great. Okay. Meg, anything that you want to be sure we add? Yeah. Um, yeah. No, let's just run out of time and not face the fact that I still haven't gotten back to what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, great. So first question is, Meg, are you okay if we skip the next two meetings? Because um, I what, are, what are our alternatives? I always thought it was amusing that you put that as a question. Okay, so so I'm going to take your that as your approval. Approved, yes. Skipping. Great. I will I will delete them from the calendar. Okay. Great. All right. So next was weekly has released. Uh, thanks to all those who contributed to it. It requires Java 17. So we have, have made the transition. No more Java 11 support in Jenkins Weekly. Yay. And the blog post that announces it is available there. We'll do one more LTS series. So July, August, and September LTS releases that continue to support Java 11. Then October 30th, Java 17 will no longer be, or Java 11 will no longer be supported by Jenkins LTS. And there is this really cool graph that we can look at that shows just how much progress we're making on moving off of Java 11. So this red, this reddish sort of line here is Java 11. Notice it's on a nice downward trend. Trailing the Java 8 downward trend with the arrival of Java 17 going up very nicely. So we're we're not far from 100,000 installations on Java 17. But we still have more than 100,000 on Java 11. Uh, we do, that's correct. And, and we expect, that's why we've got several months. Well, you can see that we've got over 50,000 still on Java 8 and we dropped Java 8 support almost two years ago now. Yeah. So what that really means is many Jenkins users aren't upgrading at all because right. they can't even run the newer versions on Java 8, and yet Java 8 continues to be used, which means there, now we haven't seen this, this is still continuing a linear decline or a near linear decline. And that's, that's really positive because it means people are eventually upgrading their Jenkins. Right. Now when and this- You might also have some hybrid installations where they've got like three up-to-date Jenkins and one old one or something. Could be, right. That's certainly also possible. Yep. All right. So on LTS releases, thanks to Chris Stern, he released 2.452.2, and the next release will come out July 10th, 452.3. Uh, I'll be creating the change log and upgrade guide because Kevin Martins is out of the office for six to eight weeks. Oh, so okay. So we'll, what's that? Is he okay? Um, he's going to have surgery. So oh, okay. Yeah, um, but he's, you know, we expect him to fully recover and we'll look forward to his return. Hey, give him my best. I will, thank you. Then the a key date next week, the next LTS baseline will be selected. The likely choice is Jenkins 2.462 because that's the last Jenkins weekly that supports Java 11. And it's, its current feedback is pretty good because this one bug report that we see here that was raised is actually an issue in a specific plugin and that plugin needs to be updated. Uh, the pull request has been submitted, but the maintainers need to verify it, merge it and release it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Next topic then is contributor spotlight and thanks to Kevin Martins for creating the spotlight interview with Harsh Pratap Singh. Harsh is a Google Summer of Code contributor from 2023 that is now also mentoring in Google Summer of Code 2024. And Chris, Mer Chris Stern did the merge. 
Yay. So we've got more to do here in terms of additional to publish. So we, we look to the next will be published in two weeks. Mm -hmm. But we need uh, volunteer editors. Right now, it looks like Alyssa Tong may do it ah. because Kevin has been doing this work and he's out. Yeah. So suggestions also for Darren Pope and John Mark Messon. Excellent ideas. And we continue our search for volunteers. That's right now, it looks like Alyssa may be the writer for that one. Okay, I'd also offer got, to, I'm not good at that stuff or else I'd offer to help out. Understood. We've got a new feature coming to the site. If we look at Eclipse Adoptium, we can, I can show you what it looks like. This is, this is the inspiration for it. So here, notice that it says, thanks, Luigi96. Ah. We plan to do something similar for the Jenkins sites. And ah. so John Mark Messon has done the data gatherer, and Chris Stern has done the work to insert the data into the pages. Fabulous. On Google Summer of Code, I've got to show you the, so the InfraStat site Okay, remember, here's how the existing stat site looks. Dark background, and when I click statistics in detail, big, painful, unlabeled SVG files that try to show the data in some form. Uh -huh. Okay, it's not the prettiest thing in the world. But now if we look at the prototype that the Google Summer of Code contributor is doing, here's how it looks. New.stats, and if we look at the statistics, Here's the plugin usage statistic. Isn't that gorgeous? Here's the Jenkins statistic. So showing us Jenkins installations across the whole lifetime. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's, it is a beautiful piece of work. And if we look at, at the data on an annual basis, we can look at May of 2024 to see, show me the plugins with more than 2,500 installations. And oh. this thing expands and contracts. Wow. Oh yeah, the, the interactive, and I can move it or drag it around like this to see, hey, what's going on here? It, it's, it is a great experience. And we've not yet hit the midpoint of Google Summer of Code 2024, and it wow. already looks this good. Yeah, nice. So, so special thanks to Shlomo, Shlomo, Shlomo Dahan, I believe is his name. He's based in Florida here in the United States, if I recall correctly, uh -huh. and a great piece of work that's being done here. And, did he do and, all the design and stuff or did you give him a I lot of I think so. I believe, I believe that's his design and everything. Wow. And, and yeah, it is, it is just a thing of beauty. So very, very nice. And, and that other projects are running as well. That's such a fun one to show. I show it just for, for sheer joy. Yeah. And we're looking forward to midterm presentations coming July 11th. Oh, what a great date. Uh -huh. Then Jenkins.io has received a number of updates. Um, we, we got rid of something that we needed to get rid of in terms of spring security update. This thing is now gone. Oh, a Hudson guy. <laughs> yes. Yes. This is an old escape hatch that was put in for an old security issue. Uh -huh. And and several additional items like that. And that really covers then version docs project. Chris Stern has agreed to carry the, the responsibility to check and update the content periodically for this site so that we get it get it up to date every so often about once a month is his plan and mm -hmm. it is still looking very good it's not ready to replace the site yet we've still got to do a bunch of testing we need but the navigation is is much much better the the presentation is very attractive and we're using antora very very nicely it, it works just really well oh good All right, next, next story is on this one. So the spring security project or the spring project, spring framework, spring security has announced 
August 31 will be the end of life for spring, spring 5.x. Mm -hmm. And Jenkins is heavily dependent on spring security. And we use spring security 5.x. So we need to upgrade from spring security 5 to their new supported spring security 6. That upgrade is a major transition for Jenkins because it involves we have to require Java 17 as a minimum version. We have to upgrade from Jetty as Jetty 10 as our container, our web container to Jetty 12. We need to upgrade from Java, Java Enterprise Edition 8, so Jakarta Enterprise Edition 8, to Jakarta Enterprise Edition 9. That means replace all the Java x.servlet imports with jakarta.servlet. And we want to retain compatibility with old plugins wherever we can. <laughs> That's a problem. And it's an amazing bunch of work. So right now, the step one, Apache file upload is done. Step two, Jenkins require Java 17 in weekly is done. This is step three. Switch from Jetty 10 to Jetty 12, but using the old Java x.servlet imports. Ah. And this step is in progress, but probably won't be merged to Jenkins weekly until likely mid-July, because you can see there's a bunch of work that should be done. Yeah. And we're looking for help from people who can assist with it. We know that we've got many, many places that need to be adjusted as we get to this. So good, good first step. Special thanks to Basil Crow and to Adrian Le Charpentier for their work on it. After that is settled, then we make the even bigger jump, which is going from Jetty 12 running EE8 to Jetty 12 running EE9. And this one, we don't have a date for it yet. So we're, we're reasonably confident this one will happen sometime in July, but this one, we know we want it in before the LTS baseline is selected that will be used for October 30th. So we need it in by, I think it is late September, but it may be yeah. a lot, maybe some, it, we, we expect sometime between July and late September that this change will get into Jenkins Weekly. Any questions? No, yeah, boy, but October is going to be really a watershed for Jenkins, isn't it? It will be. That will be a major release. The switch from, from Jakarta, Jakarta EE8 to EE9 and from Spring Security 5 to Spring Security 6 and all, all of the changes, Jetty 10 to Jetty 12, a bunch of major changes that we're going through. It Is looks, there any chance that this becomes Jen Jenkins three dot something? No, we're intentionally striving to keep it compatible, well, and how... and we would only use the Jenkins three version number if we were if we were breaking compatibility. Oh, okay. So so it's I don't see any reason that we would name it Jenkins three because to users we expect that the transition will be smooth. Oh, okay. They will just upgrade and they'll follow the usual process. Upgrade your, your plugins right before you upgrade your controller, upgrade your controller, upgrade your plugins again in the new controller. Okay. And that process we expect will just work. Cool. That's all that I had. Meg, did you have any questions? No. Nope. All right. Well, let's we beat end. We your deadline by six minutes. Go. We did. Thank you very much. <laughs>